Hey guys, JR Rustic Design here. Today I thought that I would do a quick comparison between Milwaukee's M18 brushless fuel 10 inch sliding miter saw and the absolutely new, just came out, Milwaukee 7 and a quarter inch sliding miter saw which is also fuel and brushless. So these saws side by side, they may look very similar but let me tell you, they are not similar at all. They are very different. This is a very different beast here, this little guy that just came out. There's a lot of features on this saw that a lot of people didn't like and a lot of people are wondering if this saw is going to be the same let me tell you right now it is a different beast this saw is totally different so I thought I'd just you know clean it up bring it inside since it's like minus 20 outside and just do a quick little comparison of some of the features on both of the saws um, as well if you are interested in purchasing this saw so this video is just my ramblings I'm gonna be trying to do more videos like this where I'm just saying my thoughts and uh, showing off some new products um, and then I will also do the review videos that come out after I use it for a few weeks or a few months. So stay tuned, let me know what you think, comment below. Thank you. So I just thought I'd do a little video and uh, not really a performance comparison between the M18 10 inch miter saw and the new Milwaukee M18 fuel uh, seven and a quarter inch sliding miter saw. Now from from the outside these saws look very similar but there are a few really good uh, differences between the new model. Um, I know that this M18 uh, 10 inch saw it received a fair amount of negative critique from a lot of uh, tool reviewers and professionals that used it uh, and weren't 100% satisfied with it. I'm not saying it's a terrible saw I'm just telling you what a lot of people thought about it this saw here though, the, the seven and a quarter inch, the little guy, it is a completely different saw than, the, than its big brother. And I thought we could just quickly go through some of the differences and similarities of these two saws in case you're interested in purchasing the new seven and a quarter. So to start off with the M18 10 inch saw, it obviously it takes a 10 inch blade. Um, the size of the saw is obviously larger because it is a 10 inch saw. And if you look at the stats, this saw actually spins at 4,000 RPM and it runs off any M18 battery, but it's really, um, it's optimized for the high demand 9.0 battery. That's the one that they sell with the kit. So in comparison with that, when you buy the Milwaukee M18 seven and a quarter inch, if you do get it in a kit, it does come with a seven and a quarter inch blade. Not this blade, this is a Diablo. It comes with the Milwaukee blade, of course. And it is optimized for using the 5.0 amp hour battery. Of course you can use any battery, uh, M18 battery on there, you can use the 9.0 as well, but Milwaukee states that the 5.0 is optimized for this small saw. Again, talking about RPM, this saw actually spins a little faster, it spins at 5000 RPMs as compared to uh, the M18 10 inch which spins at 4000 RPMs. So on the M18 10 inch saw, um, it can go on a left miter all the way up to 48 degrees and if you swing it all the way around to the right you can go all the way up to 60 which is amazing. And if you're comparing that to the uh, 7 and a quarter inch saw, again you can go 48 to the left but on the right it only goes to 48 as well. It doesn't go all the way to 60. So that is one difference right there. So again like I mentioned this 10 inch saw received a fair amount of negative critique just for a few design flaws which I honestly I don't understand how they got past uh, the design of the saw really. Um, it really depends what you're using the saw for but the dust collection is one of the main things that people were not satisfied with and if you notice um, because the rails go underneath into the base which may seem like a good idea because it saves some space um, the dust collection also is way back there so when you're cutting the dust actually has to fly if you notice at least nine inches back. Um, and even with the best dust collector or shop vac hooked up, the odds of most of the sawdust flying back nine inches into the dust uh, chute there is not very good. So if you compare that to the new saw, they have the more traditional rail slides at the top. And if you notice, the dust port is right there. So as you're making cuts, the dust literally only has to fly back about an inch and it goes directly up into the dust chute, the bag or the vacuum. So the dust collection on this saw is a lot better 
Um, it doesn't have to travel back inches and uh, this is a more traditional design. You see this on more DeWalt saws and most other saws where the dust chute is right there. That design works, it's proven. This design, not so much and that's why a lot of pros really didn't like the dust collection on this. Now if you're working outside and it doesn't matter, you probably won't be bothered by this, but a lot of people, you know, they would like at least a decent form of dust collection when they're working. Continuing to talk about the rail system, a lot of professionals um, and tour reviewers, they really did not like this rail system and there are a few reasons for that. Now it may seem like a good, a good system, how the rails are protected underneath the saw during transport, but in general when you're using it, uh, it's not the best system in, in, in general, really. So the main concern that a lot of people had was when you are um, putting it in the chop position here, the rails are fully extended and this whole piece here is fairly heavy. So all this weight is being held by the rails fully out. So they were complaining mostly of head deflection, um, which is some movement in the head because it is fully out on the rails. Now that a lot of people um, did note when they purchased or were given this saw by Milwaukee to test out. Um, is it gonna be an issue for you? It really depends what you're doing. If you're doing fine carpentry, this will definitely possibly be a big issue for you. If you're just doing rough cuts, it won't really matter in general. But as you see on the new Milwaukee seven and a quarter, they went with a more traditional rail system on the back like most DeWalt and Makita saws that you see. And um, when you're in the chop position, the saw is actually a lot more stable and allows for more accurate cuts. So that's the second thing where this uh, 10 inch saw really, really did not keep people happy it was with the head deflection um, a lot of people say that they didn't notice any head deflection. It may depend on the unit, but the design of the rails that are fully extended during chop really doesn't really make that much sense. If they do redo this saw, I'm really sure that they're going to have a more traditional rail system coming out the back for a more stable, accurate cut. So another reason I think that this Milwaukee M18 saw did not do so well in general is because it is still an it's just still an 18 volt tool. Now I am very, very impressed that Milwaukee was able to run a 10 inch saw off of a 18 volt battery because everyone else, DeWalt, Makita, they're all going to dual batteries and higher voltage. So if you think of the DeWalt FlexVolt 12 inch saw, it runs off two uh, 60 volt batteries. The Makita saws run off two 18 volt batteries. This saw is still running off a single 18 volt battery and impressively enough, it can spin this 10 inch blade fairly decently. If you watch any reviews, again, this, this is just a comparison. I'm not going over performance here, but if you, I've watched a ton of reviews. I've used this saw quite a bit and it does struggle a little bit to cut through most larger pieces of wood. It's not, uh, it's not gonna stall out on you, but it's not as fast. If you have used the DeWalt Flexful, which I have, I haven't used the Makita, uh, the dual battery ones, but they are much more powerful and pretty much they give you the power you expect from a larger saw. This saw, the, the power I'd say was okay. It wasn't spectacular, but what do you expect? Cause it is just one battery. Now the 9.0 is a beast of a battery, but I really think that this saw, it either needs to be dual battery with two 9.0s or they're gonna have to up the, up the voltage there a little bit. Now compare that to the seven and a quarter. So again, the, the 10 inch, a lot of people were not satisfied with, with the power that came out. Not saying that it didn't have enough power, it just, it could have had more. But uh, the, 10, the 10 inch, that's that there, but the seven and a quarter inch here, it runs off an M18 battery as well, 18 volts. But 18 volts can push a seven and a quarter inch blade a lot better than a 10 inch blade. Um, this saw here has no problem cutting through anything. Again, for a smaller blade, you don't need as much power to push it. 18 volts I think is perfect for a seven and a quarter inch blade. I have a DeWalt seven and a quarter inch sliding miter saw as well. It runs perfectly off the 20 volt batteries. Um, I've never really wished for more power. It does the job, same with this thing. It does really good on an 18 volt battery. I think any saw bigger than seven and a quarter really needs more power than a single 18 volt battery. But as for, as for Milwaukee here, they did a really good job with this saw. It does not lack power. It can cut through most anything you can throw at it and I'm really impressed with the whole design of this whole saw. 
So in general, everything on the seven and a quarter inch saw is, is better designed, it's better thought out, it's a better performing saw in general for the size. Obviously a 10 inch saw would be more practical for most people. But there's, a, there's one thing on the 10 inch saw that I really wish that the seven and a quarter inch had is the, the blade stop there. You can stop the blade at different depths so that you can do lap cuts. Um, I really wish that they had put that on the seven and a quarter inch saw. There's no, no spot for it as well. Part like that would probably cost two dollars to make or a dollar even i don't know i just wish they'd put that on because as a woodworker that's that's one feature that i really look for on a sliding miter saw so another thing that i noticed on my saw this m18 10 inch saw and a lot of other people i talked to notice as well is the fact that the spring tension on uh, the saw is very tough um, I've heard a lot of people tell me this as well that they thought that the spring tension would loosen up over time but it hasn't um, this may be from saw to saw. Your saw may be fine, other saws may be fine, but I have talked to quite a few people and they said that the spring tension is quite a bit. It takes quite a bit of effort to push the saw head down. This can be an issue when cutting um, very fine um, cuts, at a, especially at a bevel, because the extra effort you have to put in could make the cuts slightly inaccurate. Now, I don't know why they made it so tough. It may just be, you know, on the first batch of saws that came out, I'm not exactly sure, but on this M18, um, it is, I know it's a smaller saw in general, but the saw is way easier to push down. The spring tension is, is perfect, I would say. It's, it reminds me very much of my little DeWalt. It's very easy to push down as opposed to um, the fair amount of effort that it requires to push down the bigger one. Another difference on the 10-inch the saw was the, the dual bevel uh, release here. It's at the back where you just pull that up. A lot of people liked it, I heard. A lot of people did not like it. Um, I don't do compound bevels and stuff a lot, but uh, I didn't really mind it. You could just reach back and grab it. The new Milwaukee seven and a quarter has a more traditional um, knob here that you turn to adjust that as well. So that's another difference as well. So again, this is just my thoughts uh, completely. Obviously a 10 inch saw is gonna be more handy, or even a 12 inch saw is gonna be the saw that you're gonna want for most things. But in general, if you're just doing small cuts, um, if you just have a little punch list to get out, or you're uh, you know, just framing a doorway or putting up some trim or something, whatever, this little saw is gonna be the way to go because it is basically super lightweight, super portable. It's powerful enough to handle anything you can throw at it. And if you can get away with that capacity, really, why would you wanna carry around something like this that weighs like almost double the weight? Not literally, but it's very heavy. Um, Milwaukee, I'm, I'm really waiting for them to release either a new 10 inch saw or a dual battery 12 inch saw. Uh, we'll see what the future has. Um, I'm really excited to see what Milwaukee will do next and I'm sure you are too.